joining us now is Ojinika Ojiokwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jenny. Good morning, Dr. Bati. How are you this morning? I'm good. Excellent. Good morning, morning Ayo. How are you this morning? Very good. Thank you. Good, good morning, morning, Rufai. Showakpa? Mowa. Perfect. <laughs> well, good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, former President Donald Trump on Monday attacked special counsel Jack Smith and the federal judge assigned to oversee proceedings in the 2020 election case after he was charged with federal crimes in an indictment for orchestrating a plot to overturn his election loss. In a post on his Truth Social account, Trump accused Smith and U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkan of attempting to take away his First Amendment rights and demanded that Judge Chutkan recuse herself. Then, a court dismissed Trump's defamation suit against writer E. Jean Carroll, who won a $5 million sexual abuse case against the former president in May. The judge stated that Trump's defamation claims were dismissed because Carroll's statements in the sexual abuse case were at least substantially true. In Nigeria, Leaders of the Economic Community of West African States announced on Monday that the chairman of the bloc, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, will lead a discussion on the political situation and recent developments in the Republic of Niger on Thursday, August 10th, at the ECOWAS headquarters in Abuja. ECOWAS made the announcement a day after its deadline to the military junta in Niger to reinstate the ousted president, Mohamed Bazoum. In Iraq, Prime Minister Mohamed Shia al-Sudani ordered an investigation into how a bear escaped from a crate in the cargo hold of an Iraqi Airways 737 aircraft. The incident occurred on August 4th on board the flight that took off from Baghdad International Airport destined for Dubai. When the flight arrived and being prepared for its return trip to Baghdad, the crew discovered that the bear had escaped from its shipping crate in the main cargo hold. A delay of around three hours and 30 minutes followed while animal control specialists struggled to calm the situation. Under sports, Nigeria's first lady, Senator Oluremi Tinubu, hosted women's basketball team, D Tigress, to a reception at the State House in Abuja on Monday, where she was presented with the converted FIBA Women's Afro Basket Trophy by the head coach of the team, Rena Wakama. The team had a stunning victory on Saturday, August 5th, in Kigali, Rwanda, defeating Senegal 84-74 to win their fourth consecutive FIBA Women's Afro Basket title. Remy Tinubu said their performance on the court was a testament to their hard work, discipline, and commitment to excellence. Your exceptional dedication, relentless teamwork, and unwavering determination have once again brought pride and honor to our great nation. Finally, on our entertainment, Afrobeat stars Ashake, P Square, Runtown, CK, Mr. Easy, and a host of others were treated to an Afrobeats experience in a spectacular festival held at the Spandau Citadel in Berlin, Germany. The Berlin Afrobeats Festival, which took place between the 5th and 6th of August, is the latest in the growing list of Afrobeats themed international festivals and concerts, showcasing the vibrant stars on a global stage. Afrobeats to the world. Well, let's begin what's trending with reactions trailing the Senate's approval of 45 ministerial nominees out of the 48 names submitted by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu 
former governor of Kaduna State, Nasiru El Rufai, who was among the three nominees, including Stella Okotete and Senator Abubakar Danladi, not confirmed by the Senate, began trending on social media. Well, Senate President Godswilak Pabio said the three nominees who were not confirmed had to undergo security screening from relevant security agencies before their appointments will be confirmed. Let's take some reactions. This is from Al Commandant, who wrote, DSS clearance usually precedes ministerial nominations. If my memory serves me right, does that mean DSS doesn't transmit their findings to the Senate ahead of confirmation? Or what is the essence of the background checks done by the security agencies? I don't understand. Well, Ugu Joseph wrote, this is just mere drama, which is always the case in Nigeria. At the end of the day, all of them would eventually embrace and congratulate them. They are just trying to entertain the world. As usual, the expected could only happen if the president is against them covertly. Well, in the meantime, reactions also trailed the screening and confirmation of former Minister of State for Labor and Employment and Productivity, Festus Keamu, who was made to apologize to the Senate for disrespecting both chambers of the National Assembly in 2020 when he ignored summons to explain the disbursement of 52 billion Naira public works program meant for Nigerians across 774 local governments during his tenure as minister. The Senate witnessed a rowdy session after Senate Minority Whip Darlington Mwankocha raised a motion for the suspension of Kayamo's screening pending investigation. I would like us to grant him fair hearing since he had been running away from it for people, for Nigerians to know what really happened. Because I wouldn't like any person to be holding that because this thing had been subject of debate here and there. What happened to the 52 billion? What happened to the... But he is here and it's our responsibility to find out. So Mr. President of the Senate, I'm of the opinion so strongly that he has to tell us what really happened, but not here. We have to keep it down a little bit. We're not saying that we're not going to clear him. This is a house that can reconvert at any point. You can even call for an emergency and we'll reconvert. Yes. We want a situation we hold you responsible from the onset. I move a motion that we suspend forthwith this nomination and wait until when this is left. Well, in the meantime, the clash between Festus Keamu and the Joint Committee of the National Assembly on Labor Back in 2020, resurfaced online, showing the lawmakers accusing Kayamo of hijacking the public works program from the National Directorate of Employment. It is not a place to grasp. It is not a place to grasp. We are doing serious business here. Can I expose corruption in Canada? I must respond. I will respond to what is done. I will respond to what is done. We will take it on with the protesters. That I should bring your program. I don't have a plan for you. You cannot, you cannot say something and disallow me the opportunity to respond. It's wrong. It's wrong. You can just submit your name and don't be responsible for it. All my life as a lawyer, I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to be there. Oh, that was Keamo in 2020 standing his ground. Well, Keamo issued an unreserved apology to the National Assembly for ignoring their summons and his countenance. Let me start with a, an unreserved apology. My apology is without reservation, it's total apology for the misunderstanding that arose between us um, in my committee at that time at the night assembly. I apologize without reservation, total apology. Regarding that program, every single payment, and I insisted to the past president that it must come from the central bank directly to the accounts of the people who were nominated to receive those funds. And so we as ministers, both ministers in the ministry and the head of the agency at that time that we supervised, never saw one cobble. It was straight, what we needed to do was to generate the list and pass to the CBN. 
Every detail is available at the National Director of Employment. Anybody can go there and ask for a copy. We have it in the flash and confirm every single one with a BVN number. And they are all there for, for complete transparency. Till today, we did not see one cover of that. I needed to make that clarification. And like I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that misunderstanding. Okay, Amo has made his clarification. He has apologized at this point. I mean, the question a lot of people are asking, I mean, that clarification could have come at the time that they were requesting it. But before I, before I come to you, let me take some more tweets. This is from Henry, who wrote, I remember submitting my application for this particular program, but I never received an ordinary text message. Even my ward counselor, whom I submitted the form, insisted I scratch his palm before he could accept it from me. Mm -hmm. Well, another person there goes, the National Assembly screening and confirming a man who denigrated the institution that defines our democracy is a direct attack on their integrity and values. Denying Mr. Festos a ministerial position would have served as a deterrent to the new ministers is NASS really an arm of government, Rufai? No, less urgy. <laughs> Apart from the fact that some people want to go after Mr. Kia, yes. let us state it the way it is. If Bosson apologized yeah. and they let him go, if Mr. Kia must apologize, yeah. they should also let him go. Apologies are is but, the word now, right? But, but why is Mr. Kia very <laughs> calm now that he was sentenced to be able to allow him go through? Why was he shouting with so much? Why did he shout on this side that the way we were shouting in the House of Rep before? Fire, violence. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's not a case of violence. He's just asking a question. He just shows you that when people want something, they are very calm and everything. And But most importantly, why do we have a country where a minister will not come in front of the Senate when they have asking him questions? And also, apart from all that Mr. Kiyamu has said, I think we must even review how that program was conducted. Mm -hmm. Because you see, I remember when that program was not that, it's not that cutlass program. Yes, well, that we saw people uh, cutlass and yes, everything. Different you get, the truth is, who got those monies? Were they in any way people that were closely affiliated? Just like now, we have been asking questions about those on the social registrar, and the questions can be answered. Mm. And the answer they give in response is one or two people, they take pictures and say, okay, they I benefited from this. We are seeing a consistent forensic audit into everybody and every account the money went into. We can't have a country where the police just go into all sorts of accounts. Yeah. And that's why we are saying this, leading up to the new announcements President Tinubu has made. The companies want to give one billion as support. We must go through a very transparent and rigorous process. The farmers who want to give incentives to be able to plant, we must go through a very transparent and rigorous process. We must not have projects that just go down the drain that we cannot effectively account for. So that was what caused the kofufu, the conundrum, whatever you call it, Mr. Kiamo, yesterday. But you see, it is the humility that is striking for me. <laughs> you know, the way humble. is very humble. And there he was. But anyway, you know, right. people can raise their voice when they are making an argument and all of that. But most importantly, I think the other very important case is that of the TSS rates. So are we saying that the DSS did not do due screening as regards the three ministerial candidates? Well, or it was based on the new I petitions so, there brought was a forward? New petition that, you that know? Came in. So yeah. if that's the that case, I think be... we would like to see clarification. I think we have talked at Nozzle about what even constituted the new petition. The fact that it was when Nasir Erifai, uh, former governor Nasir Erifai was on the floor of the Senate, that somebody said there's a petition against him, probably that was adopted and taken and screened and all of that. In all of this, orgy, we have our ministers now. Yes. It is time for them to work. And please, the president should not let us wait any further. Before the week runs out, hopefully we should be able to have ministerial portfolios. Absolutely. And so that these people can get to work. And Absolutely. if they do well, we'll praise them. If they don't do well, we'll say otherwise. Simple. Well, all right. In the same vein, though, former staff of the Federal Character Commission, Haruna Kolo, alleged on Monday that job seekers paid millions of naira into his personal accounts for him to take to the chairman of the agency, Muhiba Dankaka. Kolo made the allegation while appearing before the investigative hearing of the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee probing job racketeering 
In federal ministries, departments, and agencies of government, the FCC chair, however, denied the allegation, swearing on the Holy Quran that the accusation was a conspiracy between Kolo, who was a chief protocol officer, and other commissioners of the commission to tarnish her image. I swear with Almighty God and with this Quran. Order, I, got order, this, order, I, order, mean, order. I got this Quran from the secretary. He brought it to this place. Thank God the secretary brought this Quran to this place. If I ever collect one naira from this Kolo, may Almighty destroy what I've worked for. If I ever in my life ask him to go and collect one naira from anybody, whatever I'm looking for, with this Quran, may it destroy me. I'm a Muslim. All what he does for me is when we are going to the airport, he buy a ticket for me. He said he comes to my house to give money. He does not come to my house Thank you. to give money. Thank because you. I, excuse me, I said in an estate, before you enter, I must give go ahead for you to enter. Chairman, Apart from I, my chairman SSA, I should tell you, excuse me. Well, all right, Ayo, over to you. I mean, this is federal mm. character. A lot of people say federal mm. character has no character. But you know, the person who was overseeing the committee was yeah. saying, you know, you have to calm down. You don't, you know, don't bring in your emotions here to try to, you know, preempt the outcome of the investigation. Swearing on the Holy Quran, Ayo. Well, we bring in emotions a lot when it comes. We've seen a number of um, investigations before our screens at, in the Senate and where we see people come very emotive. Some people yes. faint. Some people all of a sudden have health conditions that were not there before. We've seen drama play out in the Senate. But I'd like to refer to today's article, um, Tuesday with Ruben Abati by Dr. Abati in this day <laughs> newspaper, back, back page, The Menace of Prophets and Our Future. Yes. He talks about the fact that for many studies, Nigeria is one of the most religious countries in the world. Also one of the poorest countries in the world. Also one of the most corrupt countries in the world. So there's something that doesn't quite add up with our religiosity and our character. And I'm talking about federal character um, council. It's important, on the face of it, she was able, she wanted to swear, uh, Miss Muhida um, Dankaka was willing to swear on the Quran, which she did to ascertain or to defend her innocence. However, because we have seen this play out a number of times and it's quite sad because indeed, this is the Holy Quran, the Bible and symbols of our religion should be holy and sacred. But because we have seen in the past where people have lied on that oath, we are not going to play on emotions. We're not going to depend on emotions or um, her, um, her fervency in, yes. de in defending herself. Let us have a thorough investigation. Se over 30 million naira was found in Kolo's account, a civil servant. And he was her chief protocol officer. And he also said, so it's his word against her, except a forensic aud audit and an investigation is done to ascertain the true state of things. And beyond this particular um, um, department, across different government agencies. We see job bracketeering, we, it, is, it is almost the norm. We hear it and it's not so shocking to us. Whether money is exchanged or for favors or the fact that I knew your father or your mother before so I want to favor with the job, it is all a mark of corruption. It should be investigated and hopefully one or two people should be used as examples mm -hmm. and there should be systems in place to avoid incidents like this occurring. There are poor people who deserve the job but because they don't know anyone in the place or cannot afford to um, bribe and prevent it from um, accessing Absolutely. those jobs. Well said, Ayo. Dr. Vati, your take on all the story. Well, very quickly, I thought that uh, this Mr. Kulu <laughs> is really Kulu. What? <laughs> Kulu? As they say in Yoruba language. You go Kulu? before the House of Representatives and you make an allegation. In fact, it's a confessional statement. And it is instructive that one of the members in that assembly, in that uh, House of Representatives said, in fact, that Mr. Kolo should have been arrested there. Because what the law says is that That's it. the receiver of stolen goods is also himself a thief. You are as guilty as the person. So he has made an allegation right there of his former boss sitting down and say he used to collect money from persons looking for job uh, for employment and the approval of the Federal Character Commission to give to his former boss. He left the FC, uh, the Federal Character Commission, and now we are told works with Amcon. So, in a sense, he was indicting both himself <laughs> and his boss. So, what we can call for is further investigation, because this is a plain admission of corrupt practice in the uh, House of Representatives. 
The other part of it is that this may well be the pattern in uh, the corridors of power, whereby, and we may have had such stories, whereby the boss that is in charge of the office has a protocol officer. Part of the work of protocol officers is not only to carry bag for madame or to help take the children to school, uh, to which some of them have been reduced to. It's also to collect brown envelopes as he, as Kolo is, is, is uh, <laughs> using his uh, mentality, you know, uh, to establish. As Kolo uh, is using his mentality to establish, <laughs> Dr. Bati. So that means I get Kolo. Kolo mentality. Oh. No, no, I didn't say so. Oh. No, I didn't Kolo say so. Kolo I didn't say so. So I'm just, just confessing you are legendary. openly. <laughs> so the thing is to investigate it. Yes, absolutely. And I guess that is the purpose of that, uh, you know, uh, interaction yeah. with the House of Representatives. So he may have thrown the uh, boss, former boss, under the boss, mm. as, uh, as uh, the woman was alleging, but he has also done the same thing to himself. Yes. And I hope that consequential actions will be taken uh, with regard to uh, uh, the confession that he has publicly made. As for Festus Keyamo, where I thought that matter has now been settled, now that he has apologized. <laughs> He's not the only one that has apologized. Bosun Tijani yes, also apologized. Story, yes. I said he was sorry to say being a Nigerian is a sin. Yeah. So you find people recanting. No, he didn't apologize for that. He apologized for calling, calling the, the senators, senators moron. moron. Okay, yeah. well, well, it's the same thing. Mm. He apologized, whatever. So sometimes we say it's a free speech. But, uh, uh, let yes. me ask you, if Nayunko... <laughs> They will I, nominate you, you, you as, know I'm min gentle, as minister. But you know I'm calm and, and then they will bring you before the Senate. It wouldn't happen. And they will say, oh, uh, Mr. Ojinika, oh, on uh, Arise News. Oh, you God. used to have you, you, you say, please, I'm sorry. I'll say, your lordship. Your lordship. Your lordship. Your lordship, sir. Your lordship, pickle. Pickle. All right. Pickle. That's well, the Nigerian right. way. Absolutely. Well, all right. We'll take our final story in Kano State. <laughs> where well, history was made as the first female judge of the state, DJ Abu Aboki, was sworn in by the governor of the state, Abba Yusuf. Aboki was sworn in on Monday at the government house. The state's governor described the event as a remarkable feat, breaking the old tradition, which before now saw only male chief judges in the state. During the ceremony, Judge Aboki pledged to restore the lost glory of the state and uphold integrity, honesty, and justice in her role. She also expressed gratitude for the opportunity to serve the state. With the help of Almighty Allah and your cooperation and contribution of all stakeholders, we will, inshallah, restore the glory of the judiciary in our dear state. My goal, and I hope that will be the goal of everyone of us, is to ensure that we will enhance the justice delivery to make it more efficient, effective, and accessible to all. What can we say? Absolutely amazing. I know, you know, Kano State was in the news only recently yes. when Miriam Shetty's nomination was redrawn. It's amazing to see women representation. I think this is such an important story. It, it just begs to have these women integration into our community absolutely. as powerhouses. I think women are women. Yes. You know, talk about sports and, and politics, appointments. Um, Excellent to see Kano celebrate his first female chief judge. Yes. And she's been tasked with the um, burden of ensuring fairness and equity and restoring the glory of the judiciary in Kano State. Well, all right. I guess we have about 30 seconds only, Dr. Bati. We have to go. I don't know if we have time. Well, I'm told we have to go. Yes. But, you know, um, female judges, we've had many examples. Yes. And women have done very well on the bar and Absolutely. also on the bench. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had a CJN, yeah. Justice uh, Mukta, yeah. uh, who was a CJN 2012 to 2014. And in Ogun State, Crossover State, Bayesa, other parts of the country, yes. we have had female judges getting to the very top. Absolutely. Even the president of the Court of Appeal, yeah. Justice uh, Dongba Mesem, yeah. you know, uh, is also Amazing. female. So that's one area of our lives, okay, you know, see. where females have done very well Absolutely. because of their competence and distinction. We need more women. And quality. Absolutely. I'd like to thank yeah. you all for your great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.